How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're gonna to be talking about setting up your RV with solar and how to be able to size it. So you wanna know how big of a battery bank you need to put on your RV and how many watts to be able to replenish the power that you're using out of your batteries so that you can have a properly sized system. If you've spent any amount of time trying to figure out how big of a system that you needed to add to your RV to be able to live normally out there, it can get a little bit complicated and confusing and charts and algorithms, it just seems like the list can go on and on trying to figure it all out. So uh, the simple solution that I have for you to be able to find out how much power you're actually gonna use when you go out there is to go out and use your RV. This is gonna be the, the best way to determine how you would like to use power in there, what you can learn from how you use power and how you can manage it to where you can build a system that will suit your needs but not be overboard and overkill and break the budget. I think this has the potential to give you a much better picture and an accurate representation of the power you would use when you go out. So I would recommend using your RV and going to a place that you have full hookups. As far as full hookups, I just wanted to clarify, because uh, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to meter how much energy our RV uses in a given day. So in 24 hours, how much are we using in our RV for electrical? Now, if we're going to connect up to water, that's gonna bypass the pump. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna use the pump so that goes into the calculation of how much energy we're using in a day. So in that same thought, we wanna think about our converter. If you've swapped out your converter to a multi-stage, kind of a, a smart converter and it knows to stop sending power to your batteries when they're full, it's going to be fine as long as you start this test with your batteries full so that you're not trying to have things swayed by it pushing power into your batteries at the beginning and we just wanna clear that confusion. Start with your batteries full, and if you have a multi-stage converter, you're going to be fine. It's gonna kick on if you have a 12 volt draw. It's not gonna be throwing the test off by just producing 12 volts to your batteries when it doesn't need it. But the problem might be if you have a single stage converter, maybe you're waiting for this project to do an inverter converter unit, and that's when you're gonna upgrade it. But if you just have that single stage converter, I would recommend turning it off so it doesn't throw off the, the calculations of how much you're using. But if you do that, you want to have a good battery monitor. You know, I always love and recommend that BMV 712. It's a fantastic battery monitor. It gives you so much great information. We've also done a video on budget battery monitors, uh, so you can check that out. But if you're gonna be doing a larger solar setup, you're gonna want a good battery monitor. So that BMV 712 is a fantastic one, and it really goes a long way with giving you fantastic information. Using a meter to figure out how much power you use is really simple. So uh, we have this power watchdog and it has an app that goes along with it because this thing is tallying uh, how much power is going through it and it'll actually count how many kilowatt hours go through this. So it'll give you all that information right inside of this. And they, they make different versions of this one. This one's around $100. This is for a 30 amp RV and they go um, all the way up to the different EMS devices, but all of them still give you that app and able to, to meter how much power you're using in your RV. Now, if you're not in the market for a new surge protector or EMS device, then you could use something like this is the, the kilowatt device. So you're gonna be limited to 15 amps, which is around uh, 1800 watts. So you can't do anything big, too big on this, but uh, you can plug this in and then uh, plug in your RV to this if you wanted to, as long as you're not gonna have any weather, this isn't rated for exterior use. But even if you're trying this little test at home and you're using your RV in your own driveway, you can do this on a, on a weekend and try and figure out how much power you're using. Uh, a device like this could work as long as you don't overdraw it. But uh, using a surge protector, we can use everything that we can normally do in our RV and uh, see what we want to use and how we're using it. Now, not only is this going to meter it, which is going to be fantastic, it also gives us that indication of how many amps we're drawing, how many watts we are using, and how many watt hours are going into that. So when you're looking at that, you can see, wow, when I use those two de devices together, I'm actually pulling 3000 watts. That is a lot of power. And you start to see that the, the kilowatt hours accumulate quickly. And the more you use, you realize how much bigger your battery bank is going to be. So when you start realizing that, hey, if I turn the, the fridge over to propane and I put the, the water heater on propane rather than electric and I don't use this big of a device here, you can start to tailor it to where you can realize, hey, I can do almost everything I would like to RVing if I just make a few changes. If I swap out my light bulbs to LED so that I'm drawing less 
when the sun goes down and I'm not making power through the, the solar. Uh, if there's some changes that you can make to where you can make your, sm your system more affordable, that is gonna be much, much better in the long run. And these devices could really save you uh, what might show up on paper as thousands of dollars if you're planning your solar setup. Just from my experience, when I see people try and use the, the charts to determine how big of a system to set up, it's usually a really big system. So being able to tailor it and figure out where you can cut back and make it more reasonable is going to be very, very valuable. So if we were to look at this process, the first thing that we're asking is how much do I plan to use? And you go out and you do this and you meter it. And so you're testing it. That's step number two. And let's say that we measured it and we got 2.7 kilowatt hours. So uh, we're going to look at at some of these numbers, but let me talk about watts, volts, and amps, uh, just kind of in some general terms so we can kind of get a picture of what we're looking at here. So when you're looking at energy and power, you have watts, and it's almost like a teeter-totter as we're looking at it between these, these different voltages because we're going to be looking at uh, the voltage for 120 volt and our amps are going to be lower, but it's gonna make up the same wattage. So let's say 400 watts. So we have this voltage and this amperage to make up the wattage, but if we change it to the 12 volt side, our watts are gonna stay the same, but that relationship changes. It's a, it's a teeter-totter. It's volts times amps to give you watts. That's, that's the relationship. So that's how we're able to get to the information that we need and how big of a battery bank we want. If that was a little confusing, just stick with it. We're gonna make it really simple to be able to get to the numbers that you need in the end. Now, that number was a 2.7 kilowatt hours. So it's easier if we can get that to watt hours. But kilowatt hours is just watt hours times a thousand. So if we take our 2.7 kilowatt hours times a thousand, we get 2,000. 700 watt hours. That's pretty simple. We're basically just moving decimal points to get to the number that we need. Now, if you wanna look at a watt hour, a watt hour is basically, if you have one watt going for one hour, that is one watt hour. If you have 10 watts going for one hour, that is 10 watt hours. This is kinda of like the, if you're going 60 miles an hour, how long will it take you to go 60 miles? It's, it's really that simple. I'm giving you this information because it'll help you understand as you're watching that meter and you're seeing your usage, you can learn more about your usage and be able to bring that, that system down so that you can, you can learn, you can change what you're doing, and you can get the, the best size system for what you can actually use and make the best use of. So you're finding what you use, you're refining it, and you're making it that much more efficient. So back to our example where we have 2,700 watt hours that we used and we want to find out how big of a battery bank we need for that. It's really simple. We're going to take that and divide it by our voltage. Because remember, amps times volts will give us our wattage. So if we divide our watt hours by the voltage of our system, of our battery bank, uh, that will give us how many amp hours, just because uh, battery companies usually list their energy capacity in there in amp hours. So this is just easy to see how many batteries do I need to buy. So 2,700 watt hours divided by 12 volts gives us 225 amp hours. So that gives us our number for what we need for a usable battery capacity. From there, you can double it if you wanted to, if you're gonna be planning on cloudy days and still don't wanna run that generator. Uh, at the very least, I would recommend because the inverter is not going to be 100% efficient, there's gonna be some conversion lost in there, you can add 20%. It's gonna cover some of that, that loss and that conversion and give you just a, a slight little buffer in there. So 20% of 225 amp hours is 45 amp hours. Add that to the 225. That gives us 270 amp hours that we need. So if you're looking at lithium, which is a very popular way to go nowadays, you're gonna probably buy a battery bank of 300 amp hours. So uh, the very popular battle-born batteries, that, that'll give you 300 usable amp hours that you can use in your RV. If you're gonna go with an AGM system, you're gonna need probably somewhere close to, to 600 amp hours. So uh, you're looking at around an estimate of $3,000 for the battle-born batteries or $1,600 for AGM. Remember with AGM or lead acid, any of that kind of technology, you don't really wanna go beyond 50%. You're just gonna greatly reduce the life expectancy of it. I know some AGM manufacturers say you can take it down to 80%, but you're just not gonna get as many cycles out of it and it's not going to last as long. So um, I usually recommend not taking any kind of AGM, lead acid, even golf cart batteries. 50% uh, is where I would take them to. Otherwise you're just, 
they're not gonna last that long for you. That's where lithium really shines. Really the only, or the biggest negative impact of lithium batteries is the upfront cost, because they are gonna outlast AGM batteries or any of those other ones. They're gonna last much, much longer. So uh, it's really just that upfront cost is the big concern. We'll leave the battery type discussion for another day. There's a lot more involved in that, I know, but uh, uh, let's move on to how many solar panels we need to be able to replenish the, the energy that we're using in a given day so that we can keep this battery bank charged up and keep the process going so you can stay out there longer. So I'm not gonna talk specifically about which solar panel to go where. There are so many options for solar panels out there. Uh, we have the Renogy 100 watt panels and they've worked great for us. So I'll kind of be talking in those terms, but really it depends on what fits your needs, what fits your roof, what fits your style and what you end up picking. What's a good buy at that time. So I don't want this to be about which solar panel to buy. We're going to be talking about Watts and how many Watts to make this battery bank and system function great. One more quick side note is I'm gonna put a link down in the description to some of the resources that we're talking about. I made this so that you don't have to remember all the conversion formulas, even though they're they're really simple, just easy to, to fill in the blank with the information that you're gathering from this whole process and just come out with the information that you need to buy your batteries, to buy how many watts of solar. Uh, this should just help clarify it and make it a little bit easier. There'll be a link down in the description to the equipment that we have used, and I'll, I'll put a link also to our website that shows all the different solar components that we have used in the past and are, are currently using that have worked well for us. Uh, we've used the Battleborn batteries. I have zero complaints about those. They have been fantastic. Uh, we have an MPPT charge controller. Just all that information will be down in the description. But as a rule of thumb, if you were to look at it, 100 watts of solar panels will typically on average give you around 30 amp hours of power a day. That's a very general number and really hard to gauge how that would work for your situation. I mean, there's so many things that go into it. What kind of charge controller? I mean, if you went with a, a higher MPPT charge controller, you're gonna get a lot more efficiency out of your panels. Uh, but there is a website that helps you see what your system can produce at different times of the year in different locations. It's the NREL, the National Renewable Energy Lab, and they have a, a PV watt calculator, which is really kind of interesting. So let's put in some information. Say we wanted to go to South Dakota in July and be able to use our system and see what it would produce. So uh, let's put in South Dakota rapid city area. Let's put in 0.6 for the solar panels uh, because this calculator is on a kilowatt hour basis or a kilowatt system. Uh, so we're going to put in 0.6, that's 600 watts of solar on the roof of the RV. A few other things to input, we're not gonna tilt our panels at this time and we go through the process and we see that it would give us uh, 101 kilowatt hours for the month of July. Say we wanted to go there for the 4th of July and spend a week there, uh, that's what we could expect during that month. So if we wanted to break that down from watt hours, 101,000 watt hours, divide that by 31 to see how many uh, watt hours we would get in a day, that brings us to 3,258 watt hours. Divide that by 12, that gives us around 271 amp hours. So that's enough to be able to replenish what we're going to be using in a typical day into our batteries. Or let's say we wanted to look at the map and we wanted to go to Moab in March. So Moab in March, still not tilting our panels, putting it at 0.6 uh, for 600 watts still, that is going to give us 78 kilowatts. So that's 78,000 watt hours. Divide that again by 31, that gives us 2,516 watt hours. Divide that by 12 to get amp hours, and that gives us 209 amp hours. So in that first example, we were getting around 45 uh, amp hours a day per panel, and this one we're getting around uh, 34 amp hours per day per panel. So the point is this website can actually be pretty handy. If you're trying to design a system to be able to go to Alaska to be able to use your RV during a certain time, or if you had somewhere else that you were, you mainly RV and that's how you would like to design your system, you can figure out how many panels you would need on there for that location and the time of year that you typically like to go there. It'll help you to decide how many panels you need up there. Now, remember you can also have in this equation that this is how much I would like to get from solar and batteries, but I'm not 
opposed to using the generator at times. Uh, all those kind of things can go into your calculations, but this will give you a good base of how many amp hours I need in my battery bank to be able to use my RV the way I would like to use it, and how many solar panels do I need to be able to replenish what I hope to replenish in the batteries so I can continue staying out there longer and using the entire system. Looking at all the different systems out there to try and figure out what size system you need for your RV. Um, this is probably the least amount of math that I can figure out. You still have to do math at some point, but using a meter where you can get out there and find out exactly how you wanna use your RV, to be able to learn how you're using your power and to be able to adjust what you're doing to make your system uh, work better for you, to be able to not spend as much money on a bigger system that maybe you, a few adjustments would make it to where you don't need that big of a system. Using a meter, is what's really going to help you find out what you need, how you're going to use it, and kind of learn what you can change to be able to make your system better. So uh, I think that's gonna do it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.